In this video, we discuss the role of cholangioscopy in the staging of bile duct cancers, otherwise known as cholangiocarcinoma. We will emphasize the role of staging of cholangiocarcinoma in order to define ability for surgical resection. A 71-year-old with an abnormal CT scan revealed a mass in the right lobe of the liver with ductal dilation. Associated symptoms included itching, jaundice, and dark urine for one week prior. Further detailed evaluation of the CT scan showed ductal dilation in the right intrahepatic segment and left intrahepatic segment. The common duct did not appear significantly dilated, and there was a mass-like density in the right lobe of the liver that extended inferiorly to the bifurcation. The patient went for an ERCP with brushings and stent placement. The patient had tumor extended to the bifurcation involving both the right and left main duct. Plastic stents were placed for drainage at the outside institution. Pathology from brushings as well as biopsies showed cholangiocarcinoma. The patient was then referred to Parkview Cancer Institute for further evaluation. We reviewed the case at Multidisciplinary Tumor Board and surgical oncology felt the lesion was resectable with right hepatectomy in terms of vascular involvement but there was a question about resectability and this would only be a resectable lesion if the secondary radicals from the left main hepatic duct were not involved in order to be able to spare the left side of the liver. When we referred to the second opinion, the question was posed, could we use spyglass cholangioscopy technology to determine surgical resectability? How much of the left biliary system was involved by the tumor? Can we rule out involvement of the secondary radicals on the left side of the liver? Here we see artist rendering of what the biliary system looks like. You're seeing a coned in image from the right main hepatic duct as it bifurcates to the primary bifurcation, secondary bifurcation, and the tertiary bifurcation. This is a view from inside the cholangioscope looking in the bile duct itself, trying to determine secondary radical involvement. The secondary radicals involved on both sides from a Klatskin's tumor from bile duct cancer prohibits the ability to perform surgical resection. Here we turn to the case itself. We're removing prior place biliary stents from the outside institution and cannulating the bile duct. Here's a standard view from ERCP. The guide wire is advanced up through the stricture and we see the initial cholangiogram. On initial cholangiogram, you can see a stricture perhaps involving the common hepatic duct and involving the left and right main hepatic ducts. As you can see with these images, it's very difficult to determine with ERCP using contrast or PTC using contrast the total extent of the tumor in precision. Therefore, you use spyglass cholangioscopy to determine the longitudinal extent of the tumor. Here you can see the tremendous flexibility of the spyglass high-definition cholangioscope. With Spyglass DS 2.0, we're able to better visualize the biliary mucosa. Similar to the artist's rendering, here you can see the secondary radicals of the left main bile duct, and it's clear that there's no involvement of tumor at this level. Without involvement of tumor at the secondary radicals of the left main bile duct, we're able to confidently say this patient has a resectable cholangiocarcinoma. Furthermore, when we pull back the scope, we're able to take a look at the primary radicals coming off of the left main hepatic duct. These are the areas where the left main hepatic duct first starts to branch, and there's no tumor involvement here either. As we pull back further into the left main hepatic duct, the tumor appears. Therefore, the tumor extends down the right system and then up just to the left main hepatic duct, but not to the primary or secondary radicals. This is the classic appearance of cholangiocarcinoma. As you can see in the image, there's a tumor that's hypervascular and partially occluding the lumen of the bile duct. The tumor extends from the left main bile duct down through the common hepatic duct and to the proximal common bile duct, but does not involve the main common bile duct or the distal common bile duct. That's extremely important because the intrapancreatic portions of the common bile duct are not involved. This helps determine the type of resection the patient should proceed with. In this case, it was recommended that the patient proceed with a right main hepatic resection along with hepatico-jejunal anastomosis. Final diagnosis and staging post-cholangioscopy shows a cholangiocarcinoma 
with a right liver mass extending to the right main hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, and left main hepatic duct. There was resectability of the tumor in terms of vascular involvement on CT scan. No involvement of the secondary radicals. With use of cholangioscopy, we were able to successfully determine the stage and longitudinal extent of the tumor. The patient proceeded with a right hepatectomy along with resection of the right and left main and common hepatic bile ducts and hepatic ojejunostomy to the left system. The final pathology revealed tumor extent exactly as predicted on cholangioscopy with final pathology being a PT2N1 tumor with bile duct margins exactly again as predicted by our cholangioscope. This is an extremely important example of the use of cholangioscopy to better determine surgical resectability. At Parkview Cancer Institute, we aim to use innovative technology and state-of-the-art science to better improve the outcomes in patients with cholangiocarcinoma.